In this video, we're gonna go through makeup mistakes that age you faster. These are mistakes that I see my clients over the age of 50 making all the time. Today, I wanna to specifically talk about products that you may be reaching for that are simply not working for you. If you're struggling with your makeup or you just don't feel like you look your best right now, this could very well be the reason why. But instead of just leaving you with a list of don'ts, I'm gonna give you product suggestions to get instead that I guarantee will work so much better for you. Welcome to the second episode of This and Not That. Let's go. Makeup mistake number one is ignoring your skincare. This is by far the biggest mistake that I see my clients making and is the number one reason why women don't like the way that their foundation looks or they just don't feel like they look their best. Skin is the biggest, the biggest thing and it's the thing that freaks us out the most as we start aging. It just is. The easiest way to make someone look much more youthful is to improve the way that their skin looks. I demonstrate a lot of tricks and techniques on how you can do that with makeup here on the channel. You guys are always really surprised by the before and after when it comes to the makeup on the skin. But getting to the core of it with skincare is the solution instead of the band-aid. Very sheer foundation looks are all the rage right now. It's huge 2023 trend and gone are the days of that like full matte look. Everyone is just loving luminous, glowing, beautiful, natural looking skin, you know, skin that looks uncovered. And the only way to get this look is to improve your skin's health, but finding a skincare routine that works really well can get extremely expensive. I've suggested some amazing skincare products here on the channel in the past, and I've been met with a lot of backlash in the comments because really good skincare is often paired with a really high price tag, and not everyone can afford or even just wants to spend hundreds of dollars on skincare, and I completely understand that I do. I really do read your comments, and I listen to your concerns. Okay, I, I genuinely do. So I've been testing more affordable products like crazy for you. And today I'm so excited to partner with two amazing Korean skincare lines, Land Bell and The Lab, to show you some products that will help you get that gorgeous, youthful glow at a price tag that you can swallow, a price tag that you can feel more comfortable with, but that's not sacrificing both quality and results. The very first product I wanna show you is Lambelle's Supernatural Cream. This is the most amazing moisturizer for dry skin. Oh my gosh, you guys, if you have dry skin, you're gonna die, you're gonna love this. It has this thick balm-like texture when you squeeze it out of the tube, but it melts like butter on the skin and it's clinically tested to keep skin hydrated for 72 hours. Even if your skin isn't super dry like mine, I have combination oily skin. If you use retinol at night and you're finding that your skin is flaky and irritated at times, this is amazing for pairing with retinol. If you read the reviews on Amazon, people are just in love with it. They're in love with it. I can see why. It's so affordable and so good. It makes your skin super soft, hydrated without leaving like a weird film. So it looks great under foundation as well, which is really important for me. So if you're struggling with that dehydrated, dry, flaky skin type, this is the product to get. Try it, you will not regret it. One face cream that I splurged on that I would never ever get again is the Guerlain Orchid Imperial Cream. This cream is $700. It's, it's $700, okay? So it's considered the luxury of the luxury, and I hated it. It's marketed as an anti-aging cream that targets fine lines, loss of firmness, and elasticity, but I just don't find that it does much of anything, especially for the price point. When you're spending that kind of money, you're looking for huge results, and you're not gonna get it with this. Something else that I don't like about it is that it has an overwhelming amount of fragrance, and I'm the type of person that really likes perfume. I have like a perfume collection. So for me to say that it's too fragranced, it says a lot, okay? It's also very greasy and that oily feeling doesn't absorb into the skin. So it breaks down foundation like crazy. Honestly, if you compare Lambelle Supernatural Cream to this, and then you look at the price difference, it's just wild how you can get something so much better for so, so, so much less in terms of price point. Another skin issue that I see a lot of my mature clients struggling with is discoloration, so pigmentation issues and dullness. Adding a serum that targets 
gets these issues under your moisturizer is a really good idea. Landbell has a great product for this as well, and it's called the Vita Energy Blemish Clear Ampule. This has lemon water, a premium vitamin C derivative, and niacinamide, which are all amazing for skin tone balancing. So if you're struggling with that uneven skin tone as you've gotten older, it's very, very normal. You need to add a product like this to start evening things out again. The more even and radiant you can get your skin to look, the more youthful you're going to look in general. This product in particular has six types of hyaluronic acids, which is great for hydration as well. This is like a brightener, a skin protector, a hydrator, all in one beautiful little glass bottle and it absorbs beautifully for use under moisturizer or under foundation. That's like so important to me, right? I can't stress that enough. When something sits on the skin and doesn't absorb and it breaks down makeup, oh, as a makeup artist, it literally kills me, I hate it. One vitamin C serum that I had a really bad experience with was the Lise Watier one. I can't even fully tell you if this works, honestly, because this product smells so bad that I couldn't even use it for a long duration of time. It smells like rotten fruit. It actually smells like rotten fruit. And because it's on your face, the smell stays, right? Like you can just continually smell it throughout the day. It's awful. I don't recommend that one at all. It's expensive and for a high price point, it, it shouldn't be unpleasant to use. Luxury skincare like that, that sits at a high price point, it should not be unpleasant to use. And that one is, so stay away from it. It's, it's not the best one on the market. All right, so since hydration is such a big issue as we age and that loss of radiance really is the number one thing that makes the skin look older, like I mentioned, I wanna share another really amazing serum for hydration. This one is called the Lab Hyaluronic Acid Boosting Ampule. The ingredient for hyaluronic acid products come in different sizes. So the smaller the molecule, the better it penetrates into the skin and hydrates the skin. If you've ever tried a hyaluronic acid product and felt like it was too sticky on the skin and uncomfortable to wear, it's likely because it had large molecular hyaluronic acid. This product is composed of one of the smaller molecular sizes in the industry. So it just really deeply hydrates without leaving that sticky feeling on top of the skin. This product is really great for stimulating collagen production and cell regeneration. It plumps the skin up, softens lines, and gives you that glass skin effect that everyone is wanting right now. It's it's great, it's really good. If you're taking super good care of your skin and you're improving the look of it, then you absolutely have to protect it from the sun. I'm sorry for mentioning this again. I mentioned this in every video, you guys are probably so annoyed, but it's so important, okay? It's the number one way to age your skin and to completely reverse all of the work your skincare just did for you. If you don't wear a daily facial sunscreen, you absolutely have to add one to your routine now. If you're not feeling good about the way that you're looking, you're starting a great skincare line, you know, you're investing in Lambelle, you're investing in the lab, you're doing serums and moisturizers, you're doing all of the things and then you're ruining it with the sun, like you don't even bother doing it then. Do you know what I mean? You need a facial sunscreen that is legit. You need a really, really good one. If you're looking for a really good one, the same brand, The Lab, also has a hyaluronic acid sunscreen with SPF 50. That is so, 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 so nice. Okay. It is so nice. It is scent free. It's super hydrating, but absorbs really well because it also has that low molecular weight hyaluronic acid and it doesn't leave a white cast at all. So five stars for that, for sure. I really recommend it. If you're not using sunscreen, Start using it now. Add this to your cart. Put it on every single morning, okay? It should be a part of your skincare routine. It's an essential part of your skincare routine. If you do nothing else in the morning, you don't even use moisturizer, put on your darn sunscreen, okay? Do it, I'm serious. All right, now that we did a skincare deep dive and we are plumped, hydrated, and protected from the sun, let's get into some makeup. Makeup mistake number two is limiting your eyeshadows to matte colors only. There has been a makeup rule floating around for a while that says that women with mature skin and eyes should only wear matte eyeshadows because eyeshadows with a shine or a sheen to it makes wrinkles look deeper. So these very generic makeup rules like this, 
they bother me a lot, okay? <laughs> because makeup is just art, and like any art form, there are no rules, only preferences and effects created by the makeup. People who aren't as experienced with makeup take these rules so literally that they really limit the looks that they can create with shadows, and they have way less fun with it. It's stifling, right? The reason that this rule was created in the first place is because very shiny shadows illuminate an area and draw attention to it. So for example, if you have a lot of crow's feet on your upper cheekbone area, and you highlight highlight that area with a glittery highlighter. You draw areas to that zone, and because of that, the wrinkles can appear more pronounced. But with that said, this technique of highlighting with a sheen can also create the illusion of expansion. So if you want your eyes to look bigger, keeping the lid color light and bright can give you the effect of having bigger eyes. I love using eyeshadows with a shine on mature eyes because mature eyes have a tendency to look smaller. So this highlighting effect is one of the many tools in my makeup tool belt that tricks people into thinking that the eyes look bigger and therefore younger. Right? The easiest and most foolproof way to use this technique is to pop that shine on the center of the lid only. It's a spot highlighting effect that I use all the time. I use it all the time and I really suggest that you try it. In order to get this look, all you have to do is apply concealer or a primer to the lids first and then press the shiny shadow onto the center with your fingertip. Then you can define your lash line with liner and add mascara or you can skip the liner altogether and just go in with your mascara. For the shadow itself, this is what I recommend. So you want to look for a shadow with sheen and not with glitter, there's a difference between iridescence and glitter, okay? I'm going, I'm going to explain. One of my favorite palettes is the Too Faced Born This Way, the Natural Nudes. You've seen me use it a bunch of times. It's a mix of matte and shimmer shadows, and I find it flattering for a lot of different skin tones. I use the tones Shimmering Pearl, Sparkling Sand, and Sugar Chestnut all the time for this effect. Rose Gold and Sparkling Rum are also great if you like more pink-based eye looks, and Golden Light is gorgeous for olive or warmer-based skin tones. Another palette that has a beautiful shimmer is Sigma's Nude. New mod. This one is brand new and the colors posh, avant-garde, and vintage are beautiful and they're very, very reflective. They have a lot of pigment payoff and they have like a beautiful, beautiful amount of shine that looks gorgeous in real life as well. What I don't recommend that you use is glitter. Like I said, glitter. There is a huge difference between shimmer, which has very fine iridescent particles, and glitter, which has a chunkier shine to it. A really good example of unflattering glitter is found in the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. If you look at the color Cosmo, you can see that the glitter particles are really chunky. Chunky formulations like this are not flattering at all on mature eyes, and they have a lot of fallout. So a ton of it will end up under your eye. It is very annoying. You almost have to use this with a glitter glue, right? It just will not stick. But regardless of that, glitter and aging skin, it just doesn't work. Shimmer, yes. When placed on the center of the lid, absolutely. Glitter, no. Do not try to use chunky particles. It's really hard to apply properly. And even if you manage to apply it properly, trust me, it's just not gonna be flattering. Speaking of palettes, I'm also really not a fan of the Huda Beauty New Nude Eyeshadow Palette. It looks so beautiful in the pan, right? But for whatever reason, I've never had luck with this brand of eyeshadows. Again, the glitters are so chunky and they have way too much fallout. And I also find that the pigments fade super fast. They just don't last well on the eyes. Even the matte shades are really dusty, to be honest. So even if you buy it for the matte shades, don't buy it for the matte shades. They're, they're dusty. They have tons of fallout. They don't last long. I don't know. It's, it's just not my favorite palette at all. Another palette that I do not like at all either, like at all, that I thought I would love is the Makeup by Mario's Master Metallics. I love the Master Mattes palette by this brand. I use it all the time. But the metallic one is terrible. It's seriously terrible. You can barely get the pigment on a brush. The texture is really weird and you have to like use your fingers to apply it, which is fine, but even then it creases a lot. I looked it up online today and it has terrible reviews. So this is not just my opinion either. It is super overpriced for a very unsatisfying result. If you like this video and wanna watch the first one where I go over my favorite makeup primers and my favorite foundations for aging skin, and I also tell you which ones are no good, then you can watch that video next because this one's over.